This farmhouse, located in Connecticut, was the birthplace of the man known as the Schoolmaster of the Republic. He was born October 16, 1758, and died May 28, 1843. Noah Webster left his mark across the nation. Noah Webster was a lexicographer and a teacher during the Revolutionary War. His tenure as a teacher lasted 10 years. Webster embraced Calvinism in 1807 while an undergrad at Yale University, but soon began to gain an interest in pragmatism. While teaching, Noah noticed there was a very disorganized educational system in America and he became concerned with its conditions. He noticed that all their textbooks came from Europe, or England rather, and he was very opposed to that. Webster once said, America must be selective in borrowing from the wisdom of other nations. Let the old world retain its archisms and prejudices. American children must be taught to love their country and to cherish its emerging language. To Webster, the American education system was unorganized and not uniform, and something had to be done. <clears throat> the educational ideas, the educational ideas of Noah Webster. He was very concerned and an innovator of his time. Webster decided to take action to increase the education that American students were getting. He had dreams of a common language. He wrote many textbooks. He wanted education to be uniform across the nation. And he wanted all students to receive the same type of English so that they were all speaking American language. He sought to have everyone being taught in the same way, with the same language, grammar, and spelling. Webster felt that all men should read, write, and have some skill in mathematics. This would help them to gain a profitable place in society. Webster sought to unify education across the United States. This is a map of um, the United States of America in 1783. He decided to write his own textbooks and sell them across the United States to schools, colleges, and to people. He fought to protect his work from the books that he, he wrote from plagiarism, which led to the creation of one of the first federal copyright laws of 1790. These are just some of his works that he's done. He's known for many books, but the most popular is the American Dictionary, of the English language, which helped to unify American English across the nation. His dictionaries promoted English curriculums in classrooms, colleges, and households. And this book was the very, it was the second most popular book printed in English ever in America. Now when it comes to dictionaries, Webster publicly disagreed with Johnson's dictionary for including thousands of non-English words. The Grammatical Institute of the English Language, also known as the Blueback Speller, was also a textbook used throughout the schools. This book taught kids to read, to write, and to spell, and it sold over one million copies by the 19th century. The popularity of this book sparked spelling bees, competitions, and matches across the nation. And um, his book of words was also another book that was used in the classrooms. And he also wrote his version of the Bible. Webster's books were used across the nation. In his opinion, textbooks should be strong and appropriate to the student. And his Bible, he actually published in... Um, 1833, which he used his updated American English language in this Bible. Okay. 
what a newspaper. To help promote American English, Webster also founded the American Minerva in New York City, which was printed um, between the years of 1793 and 1796. There was a total of 744 issues between those years. He was not only the founder of this magazine, but he was also the editor of this magazine. Educational influences. Webster's influences can be seen throughout the world, the nation today. It's in our constitution, um, our founding fathers, which he had a relationship with quite a few of them. The way teachers teach today, um, our curriculums in the classroom are now uniform across the states. Um, but in America, we're all basically learning the same thing, but each state has their own set of learning objectives that are uniform, but they all correlate. And with our students, we see how they have all been affected by reading the English language, the American language that Webster promoted so much.